It's Easter. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona, as we celebrate Easter Sunday and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In that resurrection, we have been given all the gifts of eternal salvation. We have the forgiveness of our sins. We are not guilty in God's eyes. We are declared justified and righteous, and we have been given eternal life. Today we're going to gather to celebrate the resurrection. We're going to hear those promises, remember all the um, blessings that the Lord gives to us freely in His Son, Jesus. We're glad that you're with us today. Um, a lot of things going on on our campus. If you can make it to worship today, I'd certainly invite you to come and, and be a part of the worshiping community here at Trinity as we celebrate Easter Sunday. If you're at home, one of the things that you can do to help us to share the gospel good news of the resurrection is that um, like us or share us on Facebook and, and your social media on YouTube. Um, can pass the video on to someone else and maybe they'll hear about the resurrection and believe in Christ as well. It's early in the morning, the resurrection appearances begin in the Gospels and here we are here to celebrate today that Jesus has risen from the dead. Alleluia! The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. We'll see you in worship in just a minute.
The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. We gather for worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have two gospel lessons today. Both talk about Easter and the resurrection. The first is the prophecy that Jesus makes in Matthew chapter 12. Some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Jesus answered, A wicked and adulterous generation ask for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom, but now something greater than Solomon is here. And the Easter gospel for today is from Matthew 28, the first 10 verses. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clapped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of our Lord. We continue now by confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, 
light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my
You know the story of Jonah and the whale. Jonah was the reluctant prophet whom God sent to Nineveh. Nineveh was an infamously evil city in Jonah's day. Jonah chose not to go, and he disobeyed God. Remember how he ends up on a ship in the middle of a violent storm, and the superstitious sailors blamed him for the storm and the danger that they were in, and so they threw him overboard. But God didn't let his prophet die or drown. God provided a giant fish to swallow him. And miraculously, God kept Jonah alive for three days before that fish or that whale spit him up on the shore. Jonah learned his lesson. He went to Nineveh. He preached the law and the gospel. And the city repented. Jesus uses the story of Jonah to help us understand his own death, burial, and resurrection from the dead. He helps us understand Easter by using that prophet Jonah. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, a wicked and adulterous generation asked for a sign but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The story of Jonah is a foreshadow of Jesus' death and burial and resurrection. Jonah was buried when he was swallowed up by the whale and given new life three days later when he was spit up on the shore. And now in a much, much greater way, Jesus is swallowed up in death. And three days later, he physically rose from the dead. He is alive, never to die again. Think about what's happening here. Jesus is predicting his own resurrection from the dead. And it happened exactly like he said. No one could do that except God himself. Only God can overcome death and return to life by his own power. One of the things that the resurrection of Jesus Christ does for us is that it confirms and it proves that Jesus is the almighty, all-powerful Son of God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a sign that Jesus is the one true and only God and that everything he says is true. Here's what it says in Romans St. Paul says, Jesus was designated the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. The resurrection, it's the greatest miracle of all. It's the greatest sign of all. It is the sign that God has given to the entire world that proves that Jesus really is the Son of God. He is the one true and only God, and everything that he said was true. God came into the world to do the work of salvation for us. That work is now complete in the death of Christ. The work is finished, and the resurrection proves it. That means that you can have complete confidence and full assurance of eternal salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus, it's the greatest miracle of all. It is the sign that God has given to the world that Jesus is the Savior. He is the Son of God, and his words are true and trustworthy. 
The resurrection of Jesus Christ proves that you are saved. It's the basis of your righteousness and justification. St. Paul writes this, Righteousness will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord. Because Jesus was delivered up for our trespasses, and he was raised for our justification. Remember that those words justification and righteousness, in the New Testament, these words mean that it's a legal verdict of not guilty. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, God the Father declares you not guilty of your sins. You are justified by faith. You are righteous in God's eyes. Those are all synonyms. They all mean not, it's a legal verdict of not guilty. You're justified. You are righteous. And all that happens only because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of this is a gift that God so freely gives to you. You are righteous. You are justified. You are not guilty of your sins because of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the resurrection, God the Father proves and he shows us dramatically that he accepts his son and his sacrifice on the cross for you. And he proves it to you and the entire world by raising his son from the dead. He vindicates Jesus. He really is the son of God. And everything that he says is true. The son of God was declared guilty for you on the cross. He was there in your place. He dies for you. So that you are now declared not guilty and are given eternal life. You are righteous, justified because of Jesus, who died, but more than that, he rose from the dead on the third day. All of this is captured in the word justification, righteousness. You are not guilty in God's eyes. This means then that your sins have been forgiven. They are removed from you, and they will never be seen or heard from again. This means that that you have peace with God, a perfectly restored relationship. You have a good, clean, and clear conscience through faith in Jesus. This means that, that you have eternal life, the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. No wonder Easter is such a tremendous day. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest miracle of all. Jesus predicted it before it happened. It is the sign that proves that Jesus really is the Son of God, God in flesh. The resurrection is the basis of your justification and your righteousness. The resurrection is a big deal. It's a sign from God that Jesus is his son and everything that he promised is true and trustworthy. When Jesus used Jonah as an example of his own resurrection, one of the things that he meant is also that one greater than Jonah is here. Jesus is more than a prophet. He is God himself. Jesus was teaching the people to listen to him like they would listen to a prophet. Jesus speaks with authority as the Son of God, and his words are true and trustworthy. You remember the story of Jonah. He would later go on, preach the gospel to the evil city of Nineveh, and they would listen, and they would believe Jonah's words. The city was spared from destruction. 
But now, Jesus is far greater than Jonah. One greater than Jonah is here. Jesus speaks with the full authority of God because he is God. His resurrection proves it. We are now to listen and to believe his words. The resurrection of Jesus Christ teaches us that the all-powerful Son of God has come into this world to bring eternal salvation. Listen to his words. Believe his words. Jesus speaks words of eternal life for you. They are true and trustworthy. For instance, here are some of the promises that Jesus makes to you. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Jesus Christ is true God and eternal life. These are just a sample of some of the promises that God has made to you about eternal life. These words are true and trustworthy. Jesus has risen from the dead. Today, hear these words, listen to these promises, and believe them. Eternal life is a free gift that God gives to you because of his son, Jesus, who has risen from the dead. When you think about faith, remember that it is not a work that you do, nor some kind of a decision that you make in your heart. Faith is a gift that God gives to you in his son, Jesus Christ. Faith hears the words of the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit works so that you know that they are true and that they apply to you personally. You see, faith makes the promises of God personal. Today, hear the promises of the Son of God. He has risen from the dead on the third day, and he gives you the gift of eternal life. All the blessings of salvation are freely given to you. Can you believe that an ancient prophet from so long ago helps us understand what Easter is all about? Just as Jonah was in a fish for three days, so too Jesus was dead and buried for three days. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. He is alive. He has risen from the dead never to die again. He is the Son of God. He has earned your justification and your righteousness before God. And his words are true and trustworthy. He speaks words of eternal life and eternal salvation to you. Today, may you hear these words. Know that they are true and put your faith in them. Amen. We pray. Father in heaven, you raised your son, Jesus Christ, from the dead as the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Fill all your baptized people with the joy of his victory and send us forth as witnesses to his resurrection. Lord, wherever your gospel is preached throughout the world, create and sustain faith in all who hear it. Deliver them from the power of darkness and bring them to the kingdom of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. 
Lord, bless our efforts here at Trinity Lutheran Church to make disciples as we baptize and teach your holy word. Heavenly Father, in every time of need, hear the prayers of those who call upon you, especially those who are in distress, those who are lonely and homebound, the sick, the dying, and the mourning. May your Son ever be their joy in sorrow, their sickness in health, and their life in death. King of the nations, remember in your kindness all who bear authority in our land and give them wisdom and integrity that they may serve us according to your will. Lord, today we pray for our church body, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and ask that your powerful Holy Spirit will be at work through your holy word to create and strengthen faith and to make disciples of many, nation, of many people. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Our triumphant holy day. Hallelujah. Who did once upon the cross. Salvation have procured. Ah. 